So this is more differentiation of the archetype fundamentally So you see the dragon of chaos here that potential manifesting itself into this ambivalent feminine figure both both promise and threat and then I've I've mapped this one out so the ambivalent feminine figure so sort of multivalent gives rise to the positive mother and then the positive mother gives birth to the hero and that's Hercules there and this I like this image a lot so Hercules is in this container so that's that you can interpret that both as something feminine the container but also as a representative of culture because it's a boat that's floating on the chaotic ocean here so that's Hercules he has to be in a container that sustains him in the murky water of chaos and you see, he's going out into the unknown, and he's got a lion skin on and that's partly because one of the initiation rituals for, for young men when there were lions, say, in the Middle East, and that wasn't very long ago was that you had to go out and kill a lion with a spear, or with a bow and arrow, or something like that it's like, that's, you know, impressive, all things considered I mean, you really think about that for a minute you really want to go out and try to kill a lion with a stick? it's like it probably, you probably wouldn't be quite the same after you did that, that would be my guess and so anyway, so there's Hercules, he's got his lion skin on and that shows that he's assimilated to the lion, the dominant sort of animal and that he's also mastered it, and he's got his bow and arrow to, so he's, he's gonna hit the target properly, he's not, he's someone who doesn't sin because he can hit the center of the target and he's got this club, which I really like because it's covered with eyes just like Marduk, the Mesopotamian hero, well what do you want to do when you go out into the unknown? it's like, arm yourself and pay attention and so, that's what you're trying to produce if you're a good mother, is this figure that can go out into the unknown armed, accurate, and able to pay attention and that's a hell of a thing to participate in, it's really fun, I found having children incredibly entertaining, it's a ridiculously entertaining thing to do, because for a bunch of reasons, one is that it's the only relationship you'll ever have in your life where you, where you actually have a chance of establishing something that's close to perfect is with your kids because when they're delivered to you, so to speak they're, they're, in some sense, they're perfect and your job is to maintain that perfection, if you can and you do that by being a good parent by being encouraging, by being on their side, by taking care of them and you can have an absolutely pristine relationship with the child that doesn't mean it's not full of trouble, because it is but it's it, it can easily be the best relationship you'll ever have in your life and, and, and in fact, I think that's, it can be the worst too and, you know, sometimes you get unlucky and your child is sick mentally or physically and things fall apart and it's not your fault but, and sometimes it is your fault, but it's a real gift and you, you have to play this game of protection and encouragement, right? protection and encouragement and get that dynamic right and then you build, you help someone develop into something that's well, exactly this, that can take on the trouble of the world forthrightly and man, that's what you want that'll make it worthwhile, that's for sure now let's see, I've got to figure out where I want to go next well, I've talked about the dragon fight, so I won't do that oh yes, we might as well look at some of the, the we'll look at the same thing on the patriarchal side of the equation so, the, it's the great father and the great mother that emerge out of chaos, let's say that um, you, you can think about that over the evolutionary time span too, because it's the fundamental differentiation of life into, one, into two sexes and, you know, the fundamental differentiation of being into two sexes that interact creatively to produce, to produce new being it's a very, very deep motif and so, the dragon of chaos differentiates itself into the great father and that's God the father, that's an image there, and you see he's sitting in front of the sun and the sun is behind him, and the sun is the thing that comes up out of the darkness in the morning and then shines the light on everything with which we can see and then collapses again into the darkness at night, right? and so in, at night it fights its battle with the forces of darkness and chaos and emerges triumphant in the morning and that's why we have solar gods, because the, the, the highest deity is assimilated to the dominant, the dominant phenomena in the sky and well, and, and no wonder, because the sun is also what gives life and that provides light and that does send the darkness away and to notice that there's something symbolically useful in that that you can also apply to the ideal person is another act of, of conceptual metaphoric genius and so behind God the Father is the sun S-O-N, sun and you see, he's ruling over a walled city here, and you can think about God the Father here as the spirit of the walled city that's a good way of thinking about it and so, and why, what does that spirit mean? well, forget about the 
supernatural element of this, or the transcendent element of it even How do you represent society? Okay, you've got your walled city Okay, why is it walled? That's the fundamental structure of a city Why is it walled? Well, because you have to have a border between what's yours and what isn't yours Or a border between your territory and the outside world, right? Otherwise, it's not delineated and defined So the first thing is, it's something that's walled off it's a, it's a defined space Inside that, there's a dominance hierarchy It's a masculine dominance hierarchy Because like chimps, our fundamental dominance hierarchy is masculine Okay, so the dominance hierarchy is What's the same across all the men? And then it's more than that It's, it's, what's, it's what's the same across all men Insofar as they found their position in the dominance hierarchy Insofar as they're supporting it, insofar as they're expanding it, and insofar as they're trying to strive up it So it's averaged across that, but then it's more than that, because it's not just the men that live now It's also the men that used to live, and the men that will live And you think, what are you relating to when you relate to other people? Well, in part, you're relating to the spirit of the men that will soon live And that's what a contract is, right? You make a contract with the potential Society of the future, it's embodied as a spirit, and so you act Appropriately in relationship to the patriarchal spirit, because if you act in accordance with that Structure, then you can extend your contractual relationship with other people across time It's brilliant, it's a brilliant conceptualization That's independent of any supernatural or transcendent reality I'm not saying it exists in, in Necessary opposition to such things, I'm just saying that you don't have to Introduce the idea of such things into the conceptualization in order to understand the symbolism Now I think it's more complicated than that, because If you think about this thing as a spirit A spirit is an essential pattern of personality, let's call it that To the degree that you're a well-civilized representative of the social world you are actually inhabited by that spirit And so what should happen as you mature is that as you become older, you should become God the Father That's what you're aiming at, you want to embody that central spirit that characterizes the civilization And that spirit's very complex, and that's why you see, often see it in relationship with the representation of God the Son Because the masculine spirit isn't the spirit in general, the spirit of civilization Isn't exhausted by its patriarchal representation, that's the dogmatic form, like Osiris, right? It's only the structure That has to be allied with the thing that keeps the structure alive So you want to be both of those things at the same time The embodiment of the civilization And the force that transforms it and moves it forward And that's what you're supposed to be, in, be being taught that's what university is for, well that's what it used to be for Now it's mostly there to produce politically obsessed idiots So, oh. anyways Sorry about that, but it gets very frustrating So, alright, so that you get the picture, that's what, that's what that represents That's what it's trying, that's, that's an idea that's been trying to emerge in the human imagination since the beginning of time And it's not a trivial idea, it's an unbelievably profound idea And it, it differentiates too, and this is what makes it complicated what kind of relationship do you have with your father? Your real father? It's often ambivalent, right? Because there's an element of him that encouraged you, hopefully Because without the encouragement of your father, man, the world is a dismal place It's very difficult to be a courageous person Unless you have your father in, in body and spirit behind you It's very de demoralizing Like, it really kills people not to have their mother They just don't recover from that But and, and I think people can recover from a fragmented father relationship, but it's the next worst thing You know, because if your father rejects you or doesn't form a relationship with you, it's as if the spirit of civilization has left you outside the walls as of little worth It's very difficult for people to recover from that So the father should be an encouraging force, but can be a tyrannical and crushing force And so that's very, that's a very difficult thing to get right, partly because if you're my son, then I should impose the highest standards of behavior on you And I should always be judging what you're doing I should be judging it with, with the aim of making the best in you come forward but, but getting that balance exactly right is very difficult And so it's easy to, for a father to swing too much into 
judgment, let's say and then of course mothers can play this role too to swing too far into the domain of judgment and to be too harsh and to the degree that the father has his own pathologies, he's going to do that imperfectly you know, he might be someone who's, who's uh, the father who devours his son because he's jealous of the new possibility, the new potential the, the struggle for, for uh, attention and love from the mother or from the other children in the family there's all sorts of things that can go terribly wrong so that's the father as wise king and that's another symbol that's been lost, I would say, to a massive degree in modern universities because all we're taught is to tear that down and, and to not even notice that it manifests itself everywhere, especially in the universities which are like they're as close to an ideal environment as you could, as human beings have ever been able to create it's as simple as that and if you can't be grateful for, for the structure of the university with all its imperfections then then you're completely blind to this element of the archetype